All right, everybody, welcome back to the interview conversation with Sean Robertson from Panasonic. This is now part D, D for Delta. We are churning through this. We have a ton of questions. We still got a bunch left. We're going to have one more part after this. And we are now getting into grip, mobile app, photography, slow motion, and USB and vlog. So a bunch of little questions here all slammed together. If you have missed parts A, B, or C, scroll back and see those. You're missing something good. All right, let's get into it. Grip, one question on this. Is the tripod mount on the base of the battery grip so that's the add-on, not on this, the add-on. In the correct place this time, I like that's quantified, the correct place, the grips tripod mounting screw would allow the lens to line up with a matte box. So I guess it was not centered? Yeah, it's not. Um, and it's... Ah, uh, okay. It's still not. It's still not. Okay. Interesting. Um, I, I, I get where the person's coming from, wanting to have it in line with the lens. Um, and I'm honestly not sure why it's not, but it's not. It's not. Sorry, guys. That's a big negatory on that one. Next one, mobile app. Um, oh, yeah, because there's there's a change coming to the mobile app, right? Isn't that getting updated? Uh, it is, Okay, but not for this reason. Oh, <laughs> well, the question here is, will it be possible to use the full screen on the image app for iOS on the GH5? Because the mobile app right now, you get it up and it shows you like your pictures, like a little thing in there. You want to go yeah. full screen. Um, it's not due to lag. Um, oh. Yes, we're moving to 5 gigahertz and we're moving to AC, but... Um, your lag is still that much larger when you're trying to pump a higher resolution uh, preview through over Wi-Fi. Okay. Um, so, no, it's okay. not going to go full screen. Okay. Well, at least there's a good technical reason for it. Is there a time limit recording in 6K photo mode? Um, this I'm not 100% sure how to answer because in my unit right now, there is no time limit recording. Now, we're working with prior to final firmware release on these cameras. Um, sometimes the cameras like what I have, the one that you have, excuse me, the one that you have, um, they allow us to push the cameras harder than it's going to be in final production to test the limits, to make sure that if we're recording that it can go to a certain point without heat or power limitation. Sure. Um, so tentatively, no, there's not a record limit. Um, but it is possible that there may be a 2959 record limit, um, because of either heat um, and it goes back to that reliability thing. Great. Okay. All right. Easy enough. Can a high resolution, uh, mm, yeah. Can a high resolution photo mode like Olympus has where the sensor moves and images stitched, stitched together be implemented? Um, I don't know if it could be implemented. Um, I don't know what the deal is between, uh, Olympus and what they own in their, uh, design for that, and then even also when you look at Hasselblad, who was the first one to ever come out with a system like that. Oh, really? Um, yeah, um, on the medium format, it was the first one that actually did it, to my knowledge. Um, I don't know if the GH5 is ever going to get something like that. Um, something to keep asking. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's a pretty cool feature, right? The sensor jiggles a little bit and somehow stitches together magically a higher resolution picture. I don't really, I totally don't get it because it can't move that much, but. Um, I mean, I just you know, I shoot like that and then stitch it together, and it's remarkable. I built a <clears throat> panoramic side and then down and back and down and back, and it was I don't remember like a 120 megapixel file or something like that, handheld shot with a G X85, I think. It came out brilliant. It's really cool to do. That. Oh yeah, huge. Okay, all right. Does HDR? Ah, this is my question too. Um, HDR mode when you're shooting HDR mode, does it now save the original raw files as well as the HDR JPEG? No. Yeah. <laughs> um, the in-camera HDR mode is JPEGs only, and it's one step uh, EV either direction. Um, it's meant as a total, um, it's not in a negative way, uh, it's meant in a total consumer way to shoot uh, HDR for the camera. Mm -hmm. um, that's why you can only access it when you shoot JPEG. If you're shooting raw and JPEG, it disables it. Well, right, right. Um, so, no, uh, the best way to do it is to still shoot uh, bracket, um, but bracketing has been made easier to get into on the camera. Yeah. So well, I, I'll tell you the reason why I want it. Um, the reason, cause I do shoot with that built in camera, um, HDR mode quite a bit, uh, quite a bit when I do real Noob. estate, when I do real estate <laughs> photography, <laughs> noob, no, 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 no I'm, real I'm estate photography kidding. because no, no, there's a really good reason for it because when you're doing real estate photography, it's a, it's a bottom feeder business, right? I, so I don't do very much of it, but there's, it's hard to make money in low end real estate. You do a multi-million dollar homes, that's different. But low end real estate, yeah. you know, a couple hundred bucks is all you're gonna get for a shoot. And so time is of the essence. And so 
I have on my GH4, I dialed in a custom mode that was a really nice, gave a really good result for the built-in HDR. Um, I had pulled a little bit of green out of it and it did all this in camera. So I could set the camera on a tripod, hit the button, get a file that probably nine out of 10, if not more of them, is perfectly acceptable to deliver to the client. But occasionally you get yeah. that one where you're going, ah, you know, I really need to do this one manually. And so what I would end up doing is shooting it twice. I'd shoot it with the built-in HDR and then turn that off and shoot it bracketed. But that takes more time. And the objective here is to not have to spend the time. So yeah, add that, put that in as a future request. I put that one in for me, buddy. I want that one. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> and 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 my my comment's definitely not that like you know it's not possible, but um, yeah, it's capturing it, the for, images. It shouldn't be impossible. Yeah, it, exactly. Yeah. So we'll we'll um we'll uh, talk on Monday when I see you in person in uh, Florida. Oh, can't wait. It's gonna be fun. Okay. Oh. Um, is post focus both in six K and in four K photo mode? Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Everything you can do with 4K photo, you can do with 6K photo. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, that's great. Post Focus is so cool. If you don't know what Post Focus is, um, I did a video on Post Focus that you should watch, and we're going to put that right there. See, when you I did do two that, videos first, didn't you? I did, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so here's the other one. <laughs> when I do this, <laughs> my assistant knows that he has to find the video the link in there. <laughs> that one, buddy. Okay, um, next up, could this is now we're in slow motion territory. Could higher frame rate... Oh, could higher frame rate slow motion be added by a former update, even at a lower res? For example, 720p or 480p, even if capturing just a few seconds to get extremely high frame rates, way over the 180, maybe a thousand frame per second or something like that. Um, I don't think we'll ever do that. Um, fun. That's not saying that we won't. Um, the reason being is we hold a very high standard on what minimum acceptable image quality is. Sure. So if going to 720 or 480 a higher frame rate just for the sake of going to those frame rates um is what's looked for um we won't do it because it falls back into that we're not going to produce a product that underperforms sure. on a benchmark for us yeah when you look at some of the cameras that do those super high frame rates the images are are very low res maybe quite grainy maybe even just black and white atrocious but but you can get some really you know you get to see some cool stuff it's it can be a really fun thing to play with oh yeah yeah and it, it, it definitely is. Yeah. Um, just with the level on this camera, yeah, you're, you're, we're, we're not going to go down into that area for it. Um, the point and shoots have 240 frame at 480, but they're a different class. Oh, really? Well, there you go. That's mm -hmm. probably a good reason to say, well, why can't I have it then? Okay. Yeah. All righty. Well, there you go. You got at least a couple of uh, requests for that there. All right. Next one. Um, does the GH5 autofocus in... 180 FPS slow-mo mode. So no, I guess VFR modes, so we already covered that. So when you're do in VFR, mm -hmm. which is what you are to do 180 FPS, you do not have autofocus. Ah, this is good. So USB questions. Can you use the camera as a webcam via the USB connection? Uh, unfortunately not. Um, I don't know what the reasons are behind it, but because um, this goes with the, the question right below it um, about uh, opening, a, opening up the API to yeah. other developers. Um, I don't know the reason why, but um, USB is only used for uh, printing or image transfer uh, or eventually tethering when we add it uh, in yes. firmware later this year. Yes, which is very good. I saw that on something that somewhere. Anyway, so that's good. That's coming. Okay, so no, but don't really know why. That would be a nice feature to have because it is one of those. Um, right now, if I want to use this camera as a webcam, GH4 or whatever as a webcam, I need a – that's out in the other room – 400 i believe it is dollar adapter to convert hdmi to usb and to be able to do it reliably and to get a good clean signal um so getting <laughs> she, she can come in and say hi getting um <laughs> getting a clean signal out of the usb would be awesome hey, hi. <laughs> don't worry only a hundred thousand people is going to see you don't worry about it it's okay she can come in there hello where is it oh hi <laughs> <laughs> Right on. So, uh, all right. So you can't, maybe we'll be able to later. Don't know the answer to that. And the second yeah. question that you alluded to there was, will Panasonic open the API so developers can access the camera via USB? Which that is a great question. And that would be a really, really cool thing to see. Because once you open it up, God only knows what people are going to do with it. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I I mean, honestly, if you, know, if, if you look at a lot of the camera companies, not many of them open the API up to no. developers. No, but that's why Panasonic is better. Because you do cool <laughs> things like that. <laughs> See, now you want to be the cool kid. You don't want to say, but, but, no. 
No, he's just, oh. dang, now he's just pleading the fifth. All right. Well, I had to come up sooner or later. He had to plead the fifth at some point. Okay. Um, next question on the list, and we'll put it on here, but it has been answered before just so that we can link to it, was will it be possible to charge the GH5 through the USB port? We have answered that earlier. We'll scroll down in the comments or scroll down in the um, uh, the description of this video and you will find the time code linking to that. I don't even remember where it was, but that's somebody else's problem to find. Okay. <laughs> uh, two questions on vlog. What is the difference between hybrid log gamma, which is included, and vlog, which is paid? Okay. So um, vlog or vlog L for this camera um, is a flat logarithmic profile that you record to compress dynamic range into the center area of the um, exposure latitude, I guess, I don't know, that's kind of a odd way to put it, but um, you, you, you crush the dynamic range down into a smaller area so that when you bring it into an editing suite, you have the flexibility to edit in um, really whatever output you want to go to, so whether that's Rec. 709, Rec. 2020, oh, Rec. 2100. I think is where hybrid log gamma is. Um, so it's made to be edited with. Um, hybrid log gamma is one of the numerous HDR supported um, uh, color profiles, color types. Um, in our TVs, in our Blu-ray player, in a number of other televisions from other manufacturers, they all support hybrid log gamma. Um, what you're going to get when we add it to the camera down the line is that when you look at, you'll have standard, vivid, natural, monochrome, 709-like. You'll have Vlog L if you've paid for the update or the unlock. Um, we'll also add uh, hybrid log gamma. Now, the difference is that hybrid log gamma is not meant to be edited with in post. It's meant to, out of camera, produce an HDR-ready file. We like to say that it's so that grandma can go out and shoot an HDR file that's ready for her HDR 4K TV that she's got at home uh, or that anybody's got just to show. Um, it's very simple, straightforward, no editing needed. Okay. And that's the only way you would be able to see it in its HDR glory would be to play it back on one of those types of televisions. Exactly. On a TV or a Blu-ray player or a combination of both that support hybrid log gamma. Um, and I say support hybrid log gamma because there is also Dolby's uh, standard with it, and there's another standard as well. Mm, interesting. So. so is there then there's no way to see it on a computer and um, and see that result, what it should look like? Um, I think if you're going to do that, your display has to be HDR compatible, so it's got to be able to to fall into that certification, wow. and your graphics card would also have to fall into that certification. Interesting. Um, this is one of those areas where we're thinking like maybe two to three years ahead of the curve for capture devices that record in HDR. Mm -hmm. um, typically something like this you're going to see is going to be shot in log, graded for HDR, and then output into sources that actually send it and view it. Got it. Okay. So. Excellent. All righty. Um, next one. Is Vlog available once paid for, of course, in 6K photo mode? which is 10-bit 420, by the way, based on the EXIF information. So someone seems to have gotten their hands on one of these. Um, I honestly have no idea. Um, because like I said, um, the cameras that, that you and I are working with, Joseph, um, they give us a lot of extra capabilities that may not necessarily live in the final firmware. Like I can shoot photos in Cine V and Cine D. Mm that's probably not going to make it to final firmware okay. because there's not really a need to do that. So with this, I honestly can't answer the question for you. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. No worries. Um, I know you might have seen, I just deleted our next breaks so that we can just power through these and, and get through. All good. <laughs> We're looking at a shared Google doc and he's probably going, he just deleted my break. What's going on? Oh man. Oh man. Okay. Uh, video. Now we get into some good video questions. Will it GH5 have crop guides, slash overlays to preview potential crops in post, i.e. 1.85 or 2.4 when shooting 16 by 9. Wow, 2.4 is one. That, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> uh, the crop overlays are something that we have heard so many times um, from everybody. And believe me, we are working on it. Great. Um, it's not falling on deaf ears. There's okay. a number of us in the office that have been hounding on the engineers that Good. we need to have at least two, three, nine, um, 
uh, crop arcs. Right. Yeah. Okay. We're working on it. Awesome. Can you crop into the sensor for 4K until one to one pixels, which would be approximately a two and a half X crop factor? It would give us some extra flexibility. We could get longer reach when needed without losing pixels in 4K, like the current HD teleconverter option. Um, so there is no one to one pixel crop uh, for the GH5. Okay. Um, it's been brought to our attention and actually just through screwing around with the camera that, you know, we can do the, the two X crop, uh, that the teleconverter system does on it, but it's incredibly limited in what it allows you to do. Like you're locked in a single point of focus. Um, and honestly, we haven't been able to actually test any of it and see what the actual quality loss is mm. there. Because when you do that, you're still recording 20 megapixel and you're doing a different type of down sampling. So I don't think that's going to deliver the results that people are asking for mm. um, because it's not a pixel to pixel crop. Um, so as of right now, there is no one to one pixel crop and there's no way to do it. Okay. All right. Can VFR be used in the extended tele mode? Oh. Uh, this is another one um, with extended tele mode. Um, and I'm just double checking this here because I I remember playing around with it and not being able to have it work okay. um, because it, you run into some of those other just kind of issues with it. So if I turn VFR on 180 frame, um, yeah, uh, extended teleconverter is disabled. It says this menu item cannot be set. Okay. So it is not enabled in VFR. Okay. Simple answer. No. Can we turn off sharpening and noise reduction completely? I'm a cinef cinematographer and a videoish look would be a disaster. The GH4 does quite a good job with noise reduction and sharpening at minus five with V-Log. Uh, so this is something that's incredibly subjective again. Um, <laughs> I've worked with a number of ASCs that have no problem with the sharpness that the camera, the GH4 was producing. Yes, they would maybe tweak sharpening down a little bit. Um, but not to those standards that, you know, you'd see a bunch of people on there dumping everything to negative five and V-log to try to make it as flat as possible. Um, super flat footage doesn't necessarily dictate that you're going to get cinematic footage. Um, I can understand why in this case you're probably looking to get a softer image because the GH4 had a little bit of crunchiness to it, which is, I think, a way, to, uh, a way we've been told how it looks. But with the GH5... The, um, the sharpening algorithms and the way that we monitor uh, detailed areas, non-detailed areas, and hard edges, which is something that we discussed in the first uh, video, but the original part one that you and I talked about. Um, we talk about how the candle ha camera handles those new detail areas. Mm -hmm. uh, what I can tell you is that with the GH5, you won't have to go through that whole process um, to reduce the sharpness. Okay. Um, because sharpness and crunchiness are two different things. Although, buy the camera. Take a look. See for yourself. There you go. Um, it's kind of a big open-ended question. Well, what is the HDR video workflow? So how do you create HDR video? Oof. Oof. Um, this is honestly going to be something that's really more for, um, you know, like a, a Premiere Pro expert or a Final mm, Cut okay. expert. Um, the HDR workflow in general, you know, you're going to want to record a super flat logarithmic file in 10-bit footage. So you're going to want to record either externally in 60p with 422 10-bit or internally up to 30p at 422 10-bit with V-Log L. And you're really going to want to make sure your exposures are kind of dead on. Um, after that, the workflow is going to be how you're going to take this out into your editing suite and yeah. edit that way. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah it's, it's outside of the spec, uh, outside of the we, scope of what scope. I know. There we go. That's the word I was looking for. It's getting late. Uh, especially for you. Okay. Without SDI inputs, which you had with the YAG on the GH4, um, how can you jam sync or can you jam sync? Uh, so the way the GH5 handles uh, time code, um, which is imagine what they're. Yeah. For those that don't get what the terminology is, we're talking about syncing time code across multiple cameras. Right. Um, with the GH5, you can sync time code on every camera to the atomic clock. Because it'll sync your time through your mobile device. Oh, cool. Nice. So when the Bluetooth update for the new uh, or the new update for um, the image app comes out, that you'll be able to sync over Bluetooth, you'll be able to sync the in-camera time 
to the atomic clock, which is what your cell phones are synced off of, um, and you'll be able to do that across all your cameras. Um, that's how you can, uh, you know, jam sync your time. You can't punch in a number and then say like, okay, start every camera at this, at some obscure number. Um, right, but over SDI, what you could do is you'd hook all your cameras up to a sync to a um, what's it called? Sync generator, I guess, and it would yeah, force and then every camera force to, everything yeah. into them. Yeah, yeah. So this it's a little different. Um, you're syncing everything over the Bluetooth app to uh, or over the app to the atomic clock. Okay, so it's got time of day, but it's not. I can't sync all cameras to start at time code zero, start at time code one hour, whatever it is, and have them all on exactly the same clock. Well, you, you could do start at zero, but you have to set it up as a, um, instead of free run, you have to set it up as rec run. Set all your cameras to zero, and the second you click record on all of them, now they're all at that. But the problem there is that you have to trigger all cameras well, at yeah, the same time. exactly. If you sync them to the clock, the atomic clock, they're all synced down to the second. Okay. So, and yeah, okay. I have a feeling that's going to disappoint somebody. Um, without having the uh, SDI, yeah, the jam I'm, I'm sure it will. Uh, video, can you record video in one-to-one -one aspect ratio? I was just trying to find the crop ratio in here and I couldn't find it. So um, so if you're recording in uh, full manual video mode, no. Okay. Um, and if you're recording in regular stills mode, no. It'll always record in uh, 16 by 9 unless you drop to... Uh, um, unless you drop to 4K photo or 6K photo mode. Really? Let's see. Yeah, you're right. Yep. All right. Well, I shouldn't even question you. I know you've been playing with this a little longer than I have. Okay. I thought you got uh, the LX100 will let you shoot square video. Well, and that's different because the LX100 was a multi-aspect ratio sensor. Uh, uh, so it was able to record the same resolution at all aspect ratios. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. Could Panasonic implement false color or is it already in there? That's a good question. Uh, it's not in there. I don't know if we could. Uh, keep asking. Okay. Um, we'll uh, we'll always bring it up. All right. Any plans on including in-camera de-squeeze for a 1.3 or 2x anamorphics? Did uh, Matt Frazier ask this question? <laughs> <laughs> um, we've we've been uh, uh, asking uh, the engineers if they have the possibility of adding D squeeze in camera. Um, haven't gotten an answer back yet from them okay. definitive one way or another. Um, so we're still checking. It's being on asked it. and you're trying. Excellent. Yes. Assuming that the LUT upload is via SD card, does the LUT stay on the card or actually get uploaded to internal memory of the camera? Oh, interesting. I believe the LUTs get loaded to the camera's memory. Um, kind of like how when you activate log, it's stored in the camera's memory. Um, Truth is, we haven't had the ability to load any other LUTs on the camera other than what's default in with it, the Rec seven, uh, v -Log L, the Rec 709. Okay. Um, as we get closer, we'll uh, let you know. Okay. I, I don't think I even knew that you could do that. So you could get a LUT from wherever and upload that to the camera, and you can be shooting natively with this look applied to it as opposed to um, doing it in post. Well, you can, um, you can view what the LUT will look like. You can't actually oh, shoot okay, a so LUTed image. Okay, so you're still shooting in vlog with a LUT applied for preview, but not it's not mastered into the file. Correct. Okay. Which okay, which makes sense obviously from a professional workflow, that's what you would want. Um the LUT is just a preview. But it is an interesting idea for um even for stills photographers to be able to design a look using whatever software is used to create LUTs and upload that in and have that baked into your image files, into your JPEGs or you know, whatever, into your video files so that you just have that look straight out of camera. It's an interesting idea yeah. to be able to do. Because it's uh, one of the things I talk about a lot of why I like to shoot RAW plus JPEG on my cameras is that I will design a look in the camera, adjust the curves the way I want them, the saturation the way I want it, and create a overall look. And to have more flexibility, more control over that would be pretty slick to be able to do that externally and then load that look into the camera. It'd be kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah, definitely would, would be pretty cool. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Last questions are Wi-Fi, and then we are done, and you get to go – well, I get to go home. You're already home. Could <laughs> could Miracast support be added? Miracast is HDMI over Wi-Fi. Ooh. Uh, I have no idea. Yeah. Um, it's a biggie. I'd oh. have to find out from the engineers. I don't think so. 
Um, I know that the question's stemming from the fact that we support 5 gigahertz um, 802.11ac. Um, I don't know if the antennas are strong enough to do it. Hmm. Interesting. It'd be an so. interesting uh, thing to be able to do for sure. Could the pa- ooh, this is good. And this one's not mine. Could the Panasonic app add live streaming to YouTube or Facebook? Uh, probably not. Uh, again, it's because of the connectivity, the reliability, and what we fall within standards of performance. Do you know what resolution um, signal is being pushed over to the phone when you're doing uh, for the preview? Because you talk about it not being high um, enough for us to go full screen. So there's was it? There's VGA, and then there's QVGA. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's 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 at most uh, a slightly better than VGA signal. Okay. So okay. yeah, you're 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 not going to get 720 or 1080 out of it over Wi-Fi. So that's why you're not going to get YouTube or Facebook streaming on yeah. it for now. Yeah, because you need 720 or 1080p for that. Could you? Yeah. Last two questions. Could you use Bluetooth because the camera's got Bluetooth built into it to connect wireless headphones? Um, this question's come up a lot. Uh, no. Um, and the reason behind it is that lag in Bluetooth is so much so that in a practical real world of shooting with video, the lag is going to be so much that you're never going to be able to actually sync your video with the audio you're hearing. Um, and that's why we can't take Bluetooth microphones either. Um, the lag is still, even though Bluetooth is pretty quick and we're on uh, BLE 4.2, um, the lag is still enough there that it cannot sync to video files. Be interesting you'd think that it could see uh well no it'd have to buffer the video and then write to to bring it up into sync hold the video yeah wait for the audio bring it up to and sync. you'd have to have you'd have to have markers and everything on both the audio coming in and the the right. video so that it would sync properly otherwise you're not getting a time code from the microphone coming in to sync your time that way and if you have any drift then your audio is desync right Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. Updating this question to add the wireless microphone part since we clearly have just answered that. Last one. Oh, you ready for this? It's an easy one. Could oh, a yeah. Bluetooth remote, simple focus and fire button be created? Does the Bluetooth stack offer that? Um. Cool. Seems like. Not sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's whether the Bluetooth, really? what, yeah, whether it actually connects to that functionality. What is the Bluetooth used for right now? So right now, the Bluetooth in the GH5 is used to connect to the app to sync geolocation information, save camera settings, uh, and what was the other one? Um, keep the bridge open to your cell phone to trigger a Wi-Fi connection. Right. Right, right. Okay. We so it's a pretty time. basic level um, Bluetooth connection. Mm-hmm. Um, you know... Oh, you also get the ability for remote wake up and auto transferring. So triggering the camera to say, like, I need to make a Wi-Fi connection to transfer images over. Um, Bluetooth's not as powerful as everyone thinks it is. Um, Bluetooth is used a lot because of its speed for indications to trigger other things or for transferring very small bits of information. Um... Triggering for a remote, I think, would be something very, very cool. Um, but I, I think that goes back to us opening up our API to mm. outside developers. Right. Um, you can, I, I just don't know if it's going to happen. Yeah, you can trigger it from the iOS app and the Android app. You can trigger the camera that way. So the ability mm-hmm. to trigger it wirelessly is there. And at that point, it's probably over the Wi-Fi. So it would be interesting... Exactly. If someone could build, you know, don't worry about Bluetooth, it's wireless. That's what you care about. I don't give a crap if it's wireless, if it's Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. But if you could build a hardware Wi-Fi remote, if someone could, that could connect to it, that might give you more range, more reliability um, instead of going through the app, which, you know, has its own issues because you're on a phone and whatever. Just phone rings and yeah. you get your thing cut off. But yeah, to be able to do that, that'd be cool. You know, wireless uh, wireless yeah. remotes are always, always handy. Or... Uh, get something that just plugs in and has a, a wireless transmitter and receiver. But yeah, a little wireless, truly wireless remote would be kind of cool. Okay, dude, that is the last question. Oh, wait, there's six more pages. <laughs> just kidding. That's it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that was one long interview. That was part two. And I, let's see here. This one was, a, we got like over two hours, two and a half hours, I think, of recording time between all these parts. So thank you like so that, yeah. much, Sean, for coming on and doing this. I really, oh, really appreciate it. 
I know that our audience appreciates it. Um, we are not going to blatantly offer a part three to this interview, but if you have questions that are still unanswered, throw them <laughs> into the comments. I or some of our many, many viewers will try to answer them for you. And if there's something that's really tough, I can ask Sean and try and get that back to you. And if there's enough really good ones, then maybe we can do a part three, but um, it's going to cost me a big bottle of whiskey, so they better be good. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Oh, man. Again, Sean, thank you very much. I will see you in a matter of days, my friend. I'm looking forward to that. Yes. And uh, everybody else out there, thanks again for your support. Thanks for watching these. If you haven't already, do be sure to subscribe to this channel. Do be sure to like this video or don't like it. If you like, that's fine too. Just tell me why. Um, and if you've already watched all the other videos, go back and like all of those too. Because, you know, those little thumbs up things, those actually make a difference. Those do help. Thanks again, Sean. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thanks for coming on board. And we'll see you all next time for the next video. Later. <laughs> Take care.